Next day. Yeah. Prop it up my phone. I need to get a tripod. I can't believe how I keep forgetting to get a tripod. I don't like that. Ordering anything online because you don't know what you're going to get. And there's five million, let's just say, um, to choose from. Okay. Hello, hello. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. I am in my Facebook group, Women Creating Healthy Lives. That's where I am right now doing this live. But I will share it on YouTube. Okay. So now I wanted to talk about this topic. Not that I'm moving away from healthy eating because I am not. It's always about health and healthy eating. But I will not be doing a lot of trainings, new ones, on what to eat during this phase of life. I have so many already done and I will be um, having a program that you can purchase that's like a self-study all about this, giving you all the information, tons of recipes, and really guide you. So that's, and I also work one-on-one -on -one with this because I am transitioning more into um, working with women, really living a fulfilling, happy, healthy, like mind, body, soul life in this phase and really making changes live, to live a life you love instead of right getting away from like the way I should be, the way I need to be, the way society expects me to be, or being afraid to make changes in your life. So welcome to those watching the replay. I know this was, uh, for those in the group, this was totally spontaneous and that's okay because this replay will be up. And like I said, it will also be on YouTube. Okay, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> share, make sure I let people know I'm on. Oh, I see someone's here. Hello, hello. Let me know who's here. Everyone. There we go. Okay. Hi, Tammy. So, Tammy, since you are the only one in, you get to ask me any questions you want, and I will help you as best I can while I am on this live video. So I know it can be confusing about, um, so my computer is over here, so I'm looking here for any comments, and this is where I'm filming. I know it can be confusing during this phase, and that is why that is, is because there's so much conflicting information out there. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there selling their products, selling their ways of being, selling, you know, wanting to coach. This is our job. It's not bad to sell. Fantastic. So I'm not saying that's bad because I sell my programs and I sell coaching. That's my job. Um, <clears throat> but there is a lot of conflicting information. And often we... um you know, someone will find something that worked for them and then promote that as the way or this is what worked. <clears throat> the thing is, is that during this phase of life and for all women, hi, Linnell, all women are different, right? So the way I coach women or help women is we want to find what works for you because everybody's different. But there are some general things that need to be switched and changed when you're looking, when you're in this phase of life and maybe you've gained weight or having digestive issues um, and things are, you know, you're just going, oh my God, like I can't lose the weight. My belly fat's coming on. I'm not feeling good. I'm feeling tired. I'm having all these crazy symptoms. I'm bloated. I'm constipated or whatever you're going through, right? Food is very, very important. And what I find gets mixed up is people talk about low carbohydrate and they focus so much on protein. And so you will see these protein drinks or protein shakes, as we call them. They're not smoothies. So when I talk about a smoothie, I'm talking about something totally different than that. I'm talking about real whole foods, a balance of things, real nutrients, micronutrients, right? So often people talk about the macronutrients, which is carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and going low carb high protein. That is not at all a real good thing to do during this phase of life in general. Okay. In general, that is not a rule that everybody should follow. It is about micronutrients. It's about vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, and amino acids, which are the building blocks to protein, right? So it doesn't matter if you have meat protein or if you have just veggie protein, right? Plant protein. 
Okay. It is the nutrients that's in it, right? What are the, what is the makeup when you break that down? So certain foods are what's called nutrient dense. That means they have a lot of vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, good amino acids. So overall, they contribute to the health of our body because they really feed and fuel the cells, what the cells need to be healthy. It is not about, oh, I need so many grams of protein today and so many grams of carbohydrates or no carbohydrates. That's ridiculous. We need carbohydrates. Broccoli is a carbohydrate. Don't you dare give up vegetables. (laughs) Right. Um, and don't just go high protein and no carbohydrates, because also if you're eating just tons of meat for many people, that is not going to work. And really, what are you getting? What are the vitamins and minerals in it? Right. There may be some iron in it, but what else are you getting? Not certainly not fiber, which we need too. Um, so I'm trying to make this easy. It is basically way, way, way more vegetables and greens than you could even probably imagine. Uh, what happens is most clients come to me and when we start looking at what they normally eat or their plates of food, we arrange things differently. It's like, okay, you want the veggies to be the largest part of your meal. You can still eat the meat, right? Or fish. Please get organic, grass-fed, whatever, because conventional meats that you buy at a superstore that are just conventional... They're pumped up with lots of antibiotics, growth hormones, which makes the animal fat. So when you eat the animal meat, you get fat because those growth hormones are going to make you fat too, right? Um, they could add a lot of water. Like for chicken breasts, they add a lot of water and, and liquids in the chicken breast to make it look big. Plus, they give those poor chickens tons of hormones and fat-producing hormones and stuff so that they get big really fast. So all that stuff is in the meat and you're eating the meat and that's not good for your health, right? (laughs) Like you don't want to eat meat that is contained, has growth hormones in it that makes the animal fat. It's also going to make you fat. So that's a big problem with fast food too. Hello, Denise. Hi, you guys. Say hello when you watch. If you have any questions about specific foods, about specific ways of eating, ask in the comments. I'm here for you right now. Um, so you really want to pay attention to, oh, is this food I'm eating healthy? Like, is it healthy food, right? And some people say, well, I don't know. Yes, you do know. <laughs> we know enough of what healthy foods are. Um, yes, salmon is healthy. Yes, some good quality beef is healthy. Grass-fed beef is healthy too. But what else is in that beef? Right? What else are you eating with it, right? So I am somebody who doesn't tell clients to give up all meat or to do this or to do that. I work with each client. So you start by eating way more vegetables and greens because those are the foods that are the highest nutrient density, as in they contain food nutrients that decrease inflammation, give you energy, help your body naturally detoxify and feed and fuel the cells of your body what the cells need. Right. Your cells need vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, essential fatty acids, amino acids. Those are the building blocks to your cells. If you're just giving them a few nutrients, but too many of the same, you are not totally feeding and fueling your body. And that's what happens when people focus too much on high protein, low carbs. They tend to eat the same things, the same things. And chicken is not a healthy meat. It's okay to eat some chicken, but chicken is not healthy. Chicken is not a healthy meat, which a lot of people think it is. It's not a healthy meat. We just, it was advertised so much in the past because people were overeating the red meats, right? Um, wild meats, some red meats, um, those things are that are, uh, probably, I don't like to say even healthier, but contain the nutrients and stuff. So if you're going to get chicken, ha- don't eat it all the time because then again, you're overeating something. Um, is make sure that it is free run organic, whatever. Okay. That I just want to say that. <laughs> and it will cost a little more money, but it, and it will taste a lot better. Uh, so just really watch the type of meat you eat. Be really conscious, right? And then, um, farm fresh eggs. I use only farm eggs. And what else do I eat? Fish. I have fish myself, wild fish. But luckily, where I live, there is a lot of wild fish. But I don't have fish that often. We don't need to focus so much on the protein. If we eat a well-balanced, like a diet with a lot of various vegetables, various greens, 
some good healthier grains, which I will talk about, and use good supplements, good super powders, we are getting everything, right? Because all foods have amino acids. Now, there are certain things like white sugar that is a pure carbohydrate, right? Just pure sugar, pure carbohydrate, doesn't have any protein in it. But obviously, you're not going to overeat that. And that's not what we're talking about. Broccoli has protein. Spinach has protein. Kale has protein. Swiss chard has protein. What do you think greens are? They're not carbohydrates. Greens aren't a starch. They're not a carbohydrate. Greens are protein and essential fatty acids. Uh, so we got to remember that we just want to get a lot, a lot more vegetables, whether you cook them or eat them raw. Now, the thing about cooking vegetables and cooking meat and all that, when you cook things over the temperature of 118 degrees, which most things are, you decrease the vitamin and mineral content because vitamins and minerals die off at certain heats. Every They're all different. So then again, you're not getting the full value of that food. So when you eat some things raw, as in salads, like grated beets, grated carrots, grated cabbage, all of that stuff, you are getting the full nutrient value. Okay, so just notice that too. Now grains, you know, it's not like it's bad to have rice or brown rice or, you know, quinoa is a really good one. Uh, Buckwheat's a really good one. Um, millet is Pretty healthy, high fiber, good in nutrients. It's just, again, higher in starch. So if you're going to be eating some of those starchier grains, and I still eat rice, right? Like, just know, have way less than you would normally. You know, often people have, like, a bigger thing of rice and then a few vegetables. You want to flip it to have way more vegetables. And I did post a video about food combining in this group, Women Creating Healthy Lives. And there is one on YouTube, too, food combining in my YouTube. And you want to watch that too, because you don't want to combine a starch, starchy grain with, or a starchy vegetable with a meat or a protein, because your, your digest, like your stomach secretes hormone, secretes digestive enzymes for either protein or carbohydrate. So you want to keep them separate. And I know we were taught differently, right? We were so taught differently. We're so used to like Potato, meat, and veggies, right? That actually is not the way to eat because it's not good for gut health. And when you can't break down and digest your food properly, you're going to end up with a lot of gut problems, which we are seeing huge right now. Food not digesting properly. So there's no right diet. There is a right way of eating for you, okay, for you. And that's what to discover. So you want to try a certain way of eating. And what I suggest, like it's super easy, way more vegetables, way more greens, more salads, and put a lot in your salads, right? You can even add green peas, chickpeas, pumpkin seeds, or kidney beans, quinoa. I always used to, I always tend to add quinoa to my salads to make them more like a meal. Remember, more veggies and greens than some quinoa in it. So you want to make your salads really hearty, celery, grated carrots, grated beets, um, grated raw beets, um, green onions, I put in them. You can add parsley, cilantro, you know, any of those things, the basil, because the herbs are really good for you too. You want to make your salads more like a meal. Um, so remember to get a variety of the cooked vegetables and the raw as in salads and keep it simple. Yes, a variety, but you don't have to make some crazy recipe. And I think that's where people get tripped up is they're like, oh my God, it's going to require me to buy all these crazy, strange ingredients. No, you just want to eat real whole foods, but just more veggies, more greens, less of the starchy starch, and don't combine the starchy vegetables and starches like beans, lentils, um, rice, noodles, anything like that with a meat or a fish where you want to keep them separate. Now, I do suggest going gluten-free because the way, it's not that gluten, the protein is bad for us. It's that the way the grains, what they're grown in, the pesticide, all they're sprayed with, how they're stored, what they are sprayed with when they are stored so they don't go bad, they don't grow mold, right? All of that, that is what's bad in North America, Canada, and U.S. right now and has been for a lot of years. So that's why you want to get rid of those gluten products. Gluten-free does not mean healthy either. 
Gluten-free breads, gluten-free anything does not mean healthy. Read the ingredients. Often they have more crap in them than anything, right? So you don't want to get caught up in the keto snacks, the gluten-free snacks. Don't get caught up in foods that read ingredients. If it's just like starches, flours, um, you know, really ingredients like that that are all not healthy. They have no nutrients to them. You don't want to be overeating those, right? And I think that's what happens. We look at calories or we look at, oh, how many carbs, how many, how much protein is in it. And you don't look at what's actually in the product. So don't fall for advertising because it's crap. They're only trying to make money. Um, that's the thing. And I know I'm sounding real. I'm just looking to see if there's any comments. Do you guys have any questions? And that is the problem with um, what we see. Now, I sell. But, oh, my God, you guys, those big companies are not, they're, they're, they don't care about your health at all. They care zero. Zero care about your health. They want money. So they're going to promote products and call them healthier or call them, this is, have a healthy snack. And then I read the ingredients and I'm like, that's not healthy at all. That's actually going to cause more harm within your body. So just be aware, read all ingredients. And if you say, well, I don't know what the, well, if you don't know what the ingredients are, don't eat it. That means it's bad. <laughs> that means it's not good, right? It's, if it says, so here's the thing. I just want to let you know about something so simple. So I have potato chips sometimes. Um, I'll have regular potato chips that are, and you have to read the labels, like seriously, just salt and oil. Now, bad oils are bad oils. I know that. Shouldn't overeat those, but that's what, right? Salt and the oil. That's it. If it's black, if it has pepper, salt and pepper potato chips, read the ingredients of what salt and pepper potato chips have in them. It's not just salt, pepper, and oil. No, it's a huge list of ingredients and salt and oil. I have no idea why, but this is how they trick people. This is how they trick people, right? anything that's flavored anything that so any potato chip or tortilla chip or treat or snack that has a flavor to it it's all fake it's all fake and it's all chemicals and it's not just what it says so like salt and vinegar right or black or pepper and salt it'll have a whole bunch of other ingredients and you'll be like what the hell are those things and if they say spices like spices or spices with an asterisk that often means Flavor enhancers, which are fake. They can't be broken down by your body. They're stored in fat. So, so many people are gaining weight, having the belly, not getting rid of them. Also, because they're carrying around these, such a toxic overload in fat. <clears throat> fat holds on to toxins to prevent, to keep it safe from the rest of your body. So, if you are consuming salad dressings, packaged sauces, packaged spices, um, when you make a soup base, what's that called? Like the, when you put the vegetable soup base, beef broth, all the broths. Oh my God, read the ingredients of a broth to put in your soup. Huge. Like, no, 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 no. Bad, 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 bad. Also look at, like, yeah, look at if you buy cans. I buy some, can, you know, canned stuff too, but I always read the labels and I always buy the organic. And I also make sure because some organic even has extra stuff in it. So we just really have to be aware um, that there's so much junk out there that when you want to eat during this phase of life, it doesn't mean you have to eat perfect. It just means, like I said, I still eat potato chips. I'll still have French fries. But they have very few ingredients. It's not a bunch of flavors and this and that, right? Like some people may say, oh, Diana, you eat like, potato chips, but you won't eat, let's say, a keto snack or a 100-calorie Oreo snack or something like that. Right. No, there's no way I'm going to eat all those chemicals. I don't eat all those crappy chemicals for when I get severely sick. So read ingredients. Okay, let's talk about food again. Sorry, got on a tangent. But this is part of the problem. I think that so many women get confused because they think they're choosing the healthier alternative but you actually might be choosing the worst alternative that is marketed as healthy. So just really beware and use your common sense, okay? 
So you want to get a lot more vegetables, a lot more greens. Look at the grains you're having. Like I said, it's okay to have rice every once in a while. It's okay. Lots of quinoa is totally great. Yams, which are the, um, some people call them sweet potatoes, the orange ones in the U.S. You call them sweet potatoes, like sweet potato fries. Though yam are okay for this phase of life, even if they're a starchy vegetable. But a white potato, it's not that it's bad for you. It's just if you eat too many of the white potatoes, you're going to really cause the weight gain, right? Um, same with rices, same with beans, lentils, and all of those. An overabundance of those are going to lead to the weight gain and you won't be able to lose the weight. But having a little bit combined with a lot of veggies and greens is okay. So it's not like, oh, I need to totally get rid of these certain foods and eat way more of these than, you know, or being confused about, well, then I won't be able to eat anything I like anymore. No, it's just, let's switch up the way you eat it, right? Just like fruit. I mean, people are like, well, I'll have fruit for a snack or fruit after dinner. If you re pay attention to food combining rules, you don't do that for gut health. It also leave you feeling bloated, horrible, um, gassy, as well as food not digesting properly and causing spoil in your stomach, which could lead to leaky gut and, and a lot of um, gastrointestinal problems now are in the future that could be really severe. So just by, you know, noticing, okay, if I have fruit in the morning, I'm going to have it first thing in the morning because it digests very fast and maybe combine it in my smoothie that I, where I'm also combining protein, essential, you know, fats, good fats, proteins. And then I have my fruit at that time, the carbohydrate, the sugar mixed with, because it balances it out. Just like, so if you eat an apple, if you eat an apple with almonds, you won't get the blood sugar spike as bad because you're introducing a fat and a protein right? Apple almonds, apple almond butter, apple peanut butter, um, apple with a few nuts is right. That helps the blood sugar, your blood sugar levels also, you know, with insulin and all that. So just be aware of that. It's, you know, like I used to love, um, used to eat for a long time, grapefruit and orange. I'd slice half, half a grapefruit, half an orange up, take the peel off, slice it up, dice it, put it with chia gel. And cinnamon, and I'd have that in the morning. I love that. That's really good, actually. It's really good. Grapefruit's really good for weight loss, too. Frozen pineapple, uh, pineapple also. But it's best combined, right, with stuff to help balance it out. So with chia gel, it's great. Blueberries. Berries are fine. Strawberries are sprayed. Like strawberries, you have to make sure you're having organic strawberries if you're having strawberries. Blueberries, the healthier, the healthier version. Strawberries, not so healthy, uh, but it's still okay, right? So it's kind of taking a look at what you're eating and noticing when you're eating it, what you're combining it with, what you're overeating, kind of like eating too much, the same stuff all the time, is what you're eating. Does it have nutrients, right? Does it have vitamins, minerals, essential fatty? And you can look it up. So if you're worried about a particular food, Go on Google and what are the nutrients of this food, right? What are the nutrients of this food? And you can look it up. Or you can go on Google and look at what um, high alkaline foods. High alkaline foods have high mineral content, which is really important for your hormones. Our bodies, our glands need lots of minerals in this phase of life, not lots of protein. We need protein, but foods that contain minerals also have protein. Those are your greens and your veggies. There's some grains that are higher in minerals. There's some um, nuts and seeds that have some minerals too, right? But just remember, you need to look at what am I eating, right? What am I eating? What's on my plate? Is what's on my plate high in nutrients, as in vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, and amino acids? Or is it, am I looking at it just like protein or carbohydrate or fat? How much fat? I want to decrease the fat. I don't worry about the fat because I eat, well, you know, of course, if I was going to eat too many potato chips, that's not good. <laughs> so I do limit stuff like that. I limit my treatier foods, right? But then when it comes to coconut oil or avocados, 
And I use salad dressings. I make my own with all my salads and I use uh, avocado oil for my salad dressings. But of course, we're not over, I'm not overeating a salad dressing, right? Like I'm adding it to a salad that's full of nutrients. So there's definitely a balance, right? Where are you out of balance? What do you, if so if people aren't preparing meals or getting their salad stuff ready for the week, then you might go to um, eating kind of some sort of health bars or just bringing snack foods all the time. So then you're definitely not getting all the nutrients you need. And it may look like you're not eating a lot of food and you're gaining weight because you're not eating enough of the right nutrients. So your body's saying, I'm malnourished, I'm starved. So everything she eats, I need to put it as fat because she doesn't eat enough of the food I need, what's your body's talking, right? So if you're not consuming enough of the food your body needs, requires, it will store whatever you eat because it's ticking off. It's like a checklist. The minerals, yep. Vitamins, yep. Essential fatty acids, yep. Amino acids. So if you're not getting a lot of that during the day, it's going to say, I need more. Give me more food. Could be why you have cravings. There's a lot of reasons for that. Or feel hungry. It's because you're not eating enough of the right foods. So most women that work with me will realize, oh my God, I am not hungry. Like I eat all this and I'm so full. Like I don't feel hungry, even though I'm not eating a lot or it doesn't appear to be, I'm not hungry. And that is because you're ticking the boxes, right? You're ticking the boxes off during your day and your body's recognizing that. It's going, oh my God, thank you for feeding me. I'm good. So your cravings greatly decrease and they will do that in one week, right? <sighs> A lot of talking, I'm trying to fit everything in. So I am, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm going to be working more in the future, except one-on-one -on -one, with women 50 plus uh, who are, you know, probably post-menopause and now still wanting to be healthy, vibrant, live a healthy, vibrant life. What does that mean at this phase of life? Looking for what, you know, I'm bored now or I want to find more interests or I want to start living a more fulfilled life. I want to find what my passion is. I want to make changes in my life, but I'm scared to make changes and still dealing with society and the way society thinks about aging and what a woman our age should be doing, should be looking like, should even the clothes we're wearing, right? Like we got to smash all those rules. It's time to live a life you love, do the things you love, love your family, be with your friends and family, be your best when you're with them and help inspire them to be their best, right? We don't want to enable people. You want to inspire people. And by you living your best, healthiest, vibrant, happiest life, you inspire others to do the same. Right. If you are worn out, stressed, overworked, never take time for yourself, feel exhausted, don't eat healthy. So then you look, ter you know, you're aging, you don't look good, you don't feel good. You, you know, all of this stuff, you're not going to inspire anybody. Right. You're not going to feel your best and you're not going to be your best with other people, too. So, so important to take good care of you and how you want to be in the future is so important. So with healthy eating, why some people are on again, off again, is because they expect themselves to be too perfect all the time. They think healthy eating needs to be consistent. You need, that means perfect. No, it just means every day I eat some healthy foods. And if I don't, the next day I do. That's all, <laughs> right? Oops, I didn't eat as healthy as I should have today. Tomorrow I'll eat better. That's it. That's it, right? We stress out too much about it. You put too much, um, you try to figure it out too much. Um, not using common sense, but trying to follow what everybody else says and then getting confused and frustrated. That doesn't work, right? So it's just like understanding the basics and the truth about what's healthy. It's healthy foods are healthy. You can Google what those foods are online. I mean, the information is there. I have so many videos on my YouTube channel. There's so many people, there's so many health coaches, but you know, watch if they say one way works for everybody then don't follow them <laughs> because that's not true right everybody is different for me you can also look at blood type your blood type i'm a blood type a 
which does better being a vegetarian. There's blood type O, which their body loves protein, but we're not. You can still be vegetarian and be a blood type O because you just look at what types of plant protein am I consuming, right? Hemp seeds, chia gel, getting way more vegetables and greens too. If somebody is vegan or vegetarian and their blood type O, you might be not feeling your best because you're like, I don't know, I'm just not feeling good. Well, because you're probably not consuming enough of certain foods. And so you're not feeling your best, right? You're eating too much of the starchier stuff is probably what's going on. And that's a huge problem with being vegan in midlife is because you're consuming too many starch, which just leads to weight gain, insulin levels being raised, and you just get in a cycle of insulin resistance and your body, metabolic disorder and your body storing fat right? Vegan can be done. I was raw vegan to lose all the weight in midlife. So eating right, you got to eat right. But I hope this helps. Does anybody have any questions? I never got any questions, but maybe I was able to answer a lot. Um, if you think of any questions, post them below. Um, even when this is a replay, because I can do specific videos about certain questions. Like I said, I'm going to be transitioning what I work with women with, but I really wanted to come in here and do something for the people that are part of this or maybe new to the group so that you have a chance to ask me questions. I also will do a one session with you. And the one session is really, really powerful because we get on a video chat. We get up, like I send you questions for, so we get on video for about one hour to 90 minutes and I will help you completely choose like how to start eating in the next little while that will fit you. And you will get tons of recipes, handouts, video links to support you, right? While you're going through it. And then, you know, when you have to, you have that one session, you'll be very clear on what you do for the next little while. Then you try it and you see how it feels for you. And then you can adjust it. You learn to like, okay, oh, I see what she means now. I'm going to try this. Oh, yes. Now I notice how great I feel. I notice what foods I were lack was lacking before or overeating before. I see the path now. And then, of course, you can always have another session if you want to really clarify things, let's say a month down the road. You can also buy three sessions where you do like one and then two weeks later do another and then a month later after do another, something like that. I also have six weeks, three month ways of working with me. You can go longer. I mean, it's just there's something for everybody, but get on a track that works for you. And if you're struggling and if you've tried for a long time to try and figure it out on your own, it's probably not working. So why don't you just get the help now? So I really encourage you that if you want the assistance, if you want the help, reach out to me um, and we can get on a call. If you don't sign, if you don't choose to work with me, I'm totally fine with that. It doesn't matter at all, right? Because you got to want to, you got to want to, and you, I got to be the right person for you. So if you agree with my philosophy and what I've said so far, then reach out to me if you, if you want help. And I will be putting a self-study program, but that means, you know, of course, the videos will be up. You'll watch them and there'll be handouts and recipes, but it's perfect. Like, that's a great thing also for women going through this phase is to get the right type of information and then implement it and give it a try and see how it feels to you. All right. So much love to you. Thank you so much, ladies, for watching. I appreciate you so much. I do have YouTube. It's under my name, Diana Marchand. And like I said, I will be, I'm going to be doing um, seven day experience, um, showing you what I'll be working on in the future, more so with women 50 plus, and I'm going to be posting about that. It'll be free and it'll be so much fun. I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, keep, keep your eyes open. So much love to you. And let me know if you have any questions, comments, and feel free to reach out to me. All right, have a great evening.